we're in our series Jesus gone wild and this morning for a few minutes I want to talk from the subject help Jesus mm, I thought I'd get better response than that but never mind. help Jesus I, I, every now and then I just need Jesus to help me every now and then I need to just cry out help Jesus I want to look at the text that comes from the gospel according to St. Luke chapter 13 the text is going to begin at the 10th verse as I'm reading from the Amplify Bible for this text, I know I have you doing different things, but for this text, in honor of the word, rest to your feet, because I'm only going to read four lines. Last week, I was reading and teaching at the same time, so you wouldn't stand for the text. But this week, I'm just reading the text, and then I'm going into my dissertation. Amen? So, the gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 13, beginning at the 10th verse, and the Amplified version reads, Now, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And there was a woman there who for 18 years had an infirmity caused by a spirit, a demon of sickness. And she was bent completely forward and utterly unable to straighten, her, straighten herself up or to look upward. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said to her, woman, you are released from your infirmity. Then he laid his hands on her and instantly she was made straight and she recovered and she recognized and thanked and praised God. Help Jesus. Sit down for a moment, sit down for a moment. I, I want to I wanna unpack this text and eatonize it and contemporize it and analyze it for us this morning. Amen. Amen. I've come to realize, and I'm, I'm hitting my first point now, I've come to realize that there's some things I can't work out. I come to realize there's some things I, I can't fix. I kind of realize that there's circumstances that comes in life, no matter how good I am or no matter how bad I am. Oh, God. No matter how much education I have or no matter how much education I don't have, situations come in my life that I have no control over. May I propose to us that the woman in the text has a situation she can't fix. For 18 years, the Bible says she has been oppressed by a demon of sickness. Notice it said a demon of sickness. The King James Version was said an infirmity, a spirit uh, that had afflicted her body. And so it afflicted her body so much that she couldn't straighten up. That means she walked bent over. The Bible even says she couldn't even look up. Which means the only time she could see somebody straight up is when she sat down and could look somebody straight in the face. 18 years. 18 years. Different than the woman with the issue of blood. Don't get her mixed up. This is a different woman. 18 years. She's been bound by the spirit. 18 years. She couldn't do nothing about this situation. 18 years and when you can't do something about the situation that's what you gotta say help Jesus but this woman as I read the text is a little different than the woman with the issue of blood because the woman with the issue of blood went looking for Jesus because she said if I could just touch the hem of his garment but this woman wasn't looking for Jesus read the text she was just in church. Oh, God. She was just in church, 
And while she was in church, the Bible said Jesus saw her. So I got to wondering, what did he see? What caused him to, to know that she needed healing? What was crying out to her, crying out to him saying, help Jesus? May I propose to you that her condition cried out. Mm, Jesus, I'm going to have to work this text. Her condition cried out. Because when you saw her, all you saw was her condition. Walk with me a little bit. If she could not stand up, you noticed her because she was always bent over. And you looked at, why is she bent over? So her condition dictated her everywhere she went. Her, her condition talked about her before she got there. Her condition told you about her before she got there. Because you're thinking in your mind, why didn't she stand up? So her condition always told a story, even if she didn't tell nobody her story, because she was bent over. Have you ever been in something that was telling your story when you didn't want to tell your story? Oh, somebody ought to help me this morning. Have you ever been in something that was telling what you were going to do when you didn't want to tell it? I propose you this morning that her condition cried out, help Jesus. May I propose to you when you were all jacked up and couldn't stay straight in, and you were out there doing your own thing, your condition was calling help Jesus. You were getting drunk, but your condition was calling help Jesus. You were getting high, but your condition was calling help Jesus. You had a pressing on your mind, and, and you didn't know what to go through, and you had drama all around you, but your condition was calling help Jesus. And I propose to you today that this woman's condition was saying help Jesus. Because I've learned sometimes I can't call on myself. Oh, God. Uh, if you haven't got there, you let, just live a little while longer. Sometimes I can't call on myself. Sometimes it's so bad I can't even whisper no deep prayer. Sometimes I can't even go there. All I can, sometimes I can't even get his name out. All I see is tears coming down. But I propose to you, your tears would talk to Jesus. <laughs> Jesus know how to talk in tear language. And while you're crying, he said, help. Help Jesus, 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 help Jesus. Sometimes your tears cry out when nothing else can cry out. And I propose to you today that the woman's condition cried out to Jesus, help me. And I propose to you that her condition caught Jesus' attention. Caught Jesus' attention. That's my first one, but, but can I hit my second point? This woman who had this condition for 18 years had a lot of reasons not to be in church. But the Bible said Jesus was in the synagogue. It didn't say the woman came to the synagogue. It said Jesus was in the synagogue and the woman was there also. She was already in church when she just got there. Y'all ain't going to help me here. <laughs> she was already in church, and Jesus got to church, and her condition called out to him while she was in church. Oh, God. I, I don't know what she was doing, but I know she was in church. <laughs> Maybe she was getting her praise on. Or Maybe she was getting her worship on. Or Maybe she was just reading her word, but that condition, catch this, didn't stop her from coming to church. Oh, God. 18 years, she had to excuse me. I'm not going to church this morning. Because I've been bent over 18 years. Ain't nothing going to change. Ain't nothing going to happen. But the Bible tells me she didn't meet Jesus there. She beat Jesus. Oh, God. God. She beat Jesus. And the text said, the text said that Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues, and there was a woman there. There was a woman there. The woman didn't come. She was there. Bent over but starting worship service. Bent over but starting the prayer. Bent over but ready to go into worship. Bent over but ready to serve God. She was there. She was there before the deliverer came. She was there before the healer came. She was there before the spirit of God came. Because everywhere Jesus was, the spirit of God was. And the spirit came in after she was already there. And the Bible says while she was in church, Jesus saw her. 
May I propose to you that not only was her condition crying out, help Jesus, but her praise was crying out, help Jesus. May I propose to you that you could be going through so much that your praise, when it goes out, cries, help Jesus. Why? Because in the midst of everything you're going through, you're still saying glory. In the midst of everything you're going through, you're still saying hallelujah. But let me help somebody. Somebody don't have a hallelujah, don't have a glory. You just made it to church. And while you're in church with your condition, Jesus sees you. The Bible said he saw her while she was in the sanctuary. So when you're going through and you can make it to church, Jesus sees you. Pastor, I don't got to get to church for Jesus to see you. You might not have to, but he see you better in church than he see you at home. I ain't going to help. Yeah, I ain't going to get no help there. That's not, the, that's not the, theological. That's not, that's not biblical, Pastor. I can't, I can't say that. It didn't say she was at home. It says she was at church, and Jesus saw her. It didn't say she was even looking for Jesus. Did you read the text? She was not like, the issue, not like the woman with the issue of blood that went looking for Jesus. All she did was go to church. And Jesus, while she was in church, saw her. I don't want to go to church today. Mm. Maybe your healing is there today. I don't, I don't want to go to church today. Maybe your deliverance is there today. You mean to tell me the woman was bent over for 18 years and she had the excuse to sit home and not do nothing? She could have screened the church. Oh, God, y'all ain't going to help me. Oh, God, she could have screened it. She could have did something else. But there's something about being in the presence of God. There's something about being around saints. There's something about being in his house. And when he sees you in his house, when you don't have no reason to be in his house, when you got every excuse to be home, Jesus saw the woman and he called the woman to himself. Her condition called out to him, help Jesus. But her position, oh God, called out to him, help Jesus. What was her position? Her position was a position of worship. Because she was in the house of the Lord. You got to go back to the text, the original language. You got to go back to the time. They didn't worship God anywhere else but the sanctuary. Not like today where we can worship him anywhere. That's why he had the discussion with the woman at the well. The Samaritan woman. Because she said, we know that we can worship him here and there. And Jesus said, well, I am the truth, the bread, and the life. You can worship me wherever. Because you got to worship me in spirit and in truth. So since she was in the sanctuary, she was at that place of worship. So her condition cried out, help Jesus. Her praise cried out, help Jesus. But her position cried out, help Jesus. Because she was in a place that she had an excuse not to be. But she said, I'm going anyway. She said, I'm going anyway. I'm bent over, but I'm going in a way. I'm hurt, but I'm going in a way. I'm in pain. But I'm going in a way. I'm going where God is anyway. I'm not looking at my condition. I'm not looking at what I'm going through. I'm not looking at what I'm feeling. I'm not looking at my pain. But I'm going there anyway. And Jesus at a glance saw all that. The Bible said, and when Jesus saw her, which means he didn't see her. When he first got there. But when he got there. And was doing his thing. He saw her. And when he saw her. Her condition cried out to him. When he saw her. Her worship. Her praise cried out to him. And when he saw her. Her position of just being in church. Cried out to him. And the Bible said. Jesus called her to him. This thing caught my attention, Mr. Harvey, because she didn't go running after Jesus like a fan going after a major star. Matter of fact, it doesn't even say that she knew Jesus was going to be there. She just showed up because it was worship time. 
<laughs> I wonder, can I get anybody to show up just because it's worship time? I, Pastor, you don't know what I'm going through. You're right, but can you show up because it's worship time? Because you don't know if this worship time, Jesus is going to show up. You don't know if this worship time, he's going to say, I'm tired of what you're going through. I'm going to hear you right now. Because the Bible said that he called her to him. He rebuked the demon because he said, be straight. And then he laid hands on her. And she immediately, not two weeks later, not ten days later, not after she gave an offering, not after she got your prayer call, but immediately, she received her healing. May I propose to you that if she wasn't in church, she wouldn't have got her healing. Because Jesus wasn't looking for her, and she wasn't looking for Jesus. Oh, God. That brings me to another point. That's my side note. Some of us weren't looking for Jesus, and he really wasn't looking for us. But we came to the house anyway, and he said, well, since you're in the house, and it looks like you need some help, let me go ahead. Oh, God. Y'all ain't going, you didn't come looking for Jesus. You came looking for something else. I don't know if it was a woman. I don't know what it was you came looking for, but you came looking for something else. And while you were here looking for something else, you bumped into Jesus. The woman was not looking for Jesus. She was not looking for religion. She was not looking for counseling. She was just in church. And the Bible don't say that she saw him and ran to him. It says Jesus saw her and called her to him. That let me know. Jesus cared enough about her to say, hold up. You're not running after me. You're not doing it. Maybe you don't know who I am, but it don't matter. I'm going to hear you. Come on. Come on. I propose to you, well, Pastor, I, you know, if I'm not in church, I just won't meant to get it. The devil is a liar. This woman, if she won't in church, wouldn't have got it. Does that mean she won't meant to be healed? I propose a theological question to you. I know you didn't go to seminary, but let me propose a theological question to you. Does that mean she wasn't destined to be healed? When Jesus said, I came to heal, he said, I came for the sick. Because those who are well don't need a physician. A physician. So does that mean if she didn't show up, she wasn't destined to be healed? No, no. That means she missed her blessing. So maybe you need to stop staying home because you're missing your, oh, God. Blessing. She was in church. And Jesus saw her. And he healed her. Because of where she was, she got her blessing. Oh, God. Because of where she was, she got her blessing. Maybe you need to go to the right place. Because your blessing doesn't seem to be where perhaps you've been going. God wants you in a place where he is. And sometimes we're missing him because we let everything else come before I worship. No, Pastor, I don't let everything come before my worship. Part of your worship is church assembly. Oh, I got to teach church one on one. Part of your worship is church assembly. Do not forsake yourself to gather together because although I can pray at home, there's more power when I got somebody else agreeing with me although i can get healed at home there's a more instantaneous manifestation when everybody is in the place and everybody has the same mind because on the day of pentecost the bible said they were of one accord which means they were of one mind and god healed them but that was the day of pentecost well let's jump further than the day of pentecost because after peter and john got beat and they went back to the house and they were on one accord again not the day of pentecost just a regular the day the Bible said the Holy Ghost came and shut the building to the foundation so while I'm struggling at home by myself trying to get healing maybe if I come to this house and sis put her arm on me this side and the other one put the arm on me this side and we get together my manifestation will come because I'm not struggling no more because somebody is helping me live this burden, I propose to you she, she wouldn't have got her healing if she didn't make it to church that day. If this was one of those Sundays, she said, well, I went last Sunday, so I'm not going this Sunday. Mm, Jesus. 
I'm glad I don't need no amens to preach because I wouldn't be preaching too long this morning. I, she, she, she didn't say, you know, it's not my day to serve, so I'm not going. Oh, God, I, that's not what the text says. She, she didn't say, well, well, you know, I just don't feel well this morning, so I'm not going. She didn't, she didn't say that because she ain't feel well any morning for 18 years. If you be real about the text, she didn't feel like going to church for 18 years. But she was there. And because she was there, look what happened. She got her healing. May I propose to you just because you came. Oh, God. See, that's got to be your faith. I, I, I can't help some of y'all, but that's got to be your faith. God, you came just because I came. Yes. Did we read the text? She was already there. I don't know if Jesus came just because she was there. But just because I came, you showed up, Lord. Just because I came, you began, you wanted to manifest your spirit and bless me. Just because I came. Oh, God, next time somebody tell you they don't want to go to church, take them to Luke 10, 13 and 10. Take them there. Take them there. Because they bound. But I got to move on. I got to move on to point number three because, see, I think this is prevalent to many of us because I didn't read this, this uh, particular verse, but I want to go down to the 14th verse because it says after Jesus healed her, listen, listen to this. It says, but the leaders of the synagogue, oh, uh, yeah, the church people, oh, God. The religious people. I'm gonna. I, I'm going We're gonna put it on the internet. I don't care. With the church leaders, the 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 the, the, the religious people, that those who want to do it in order. That ain't time to heal right now, Jesus. It says, but the leaders of the synagogue indignant it because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. What in the world? I'm saved. I can't use other language. What in the world? And said to the crowd, hold up, hold up. They stopped the whole church service. Read the text. It said, and said to the crowd. They told the choir, the choir, stop singing. Us just sit down. This man that interrupted our service, you know we do this stuff in order. And he didn't heal this woman on the Sabbath. Isn't that what you come to church for? I don't come to church to usher. I don't come to church to say, although I may do that while I'm here, I really don't even come to church to preach. <laughs> although that is my job, I come to church to meet God. If I don't preach a word, let me meet God. If I don't sing a word, let me meet God. If I don't usher nobody in the door, let me meet God. Because I can do all that and don't meet God. I ain't had church. I just had a performance. Church ain't church if God ain't there. And then church ain't fully church unless he touched me while he's there. The leaders of the service... Got indignant, shut everything down, and said to the crowd, look what they said. Are there six days in which work ought to be done? So come on these days and be cured, not on the Sabbath. Let me eat now this real. You got the nerve to interrupt my service to get this woman here. Did you hear that choir singing? Weren't they singing beautifully? Did you hear that deacon praying? You interrupt his prayer? Pray like that for six years and you interrupt his prayer. <laughs> and you get upset because somebody got delivered. Isn't that what they came to church for? Isn't that what they came to church for? Pastor, you praying too long for that person, but she need deliverance. Pastor, you can't call the prayer line today. I got to go see the game. But they need deliverance. I might as well hit it all. I ain't getting no amens anyway. I might as well hit it all today. Do you know I got to go out? Pastor, you got to be out by 12. But this person needs healing. They're going through right now. I can't, you mean I can't interrupt your schedule to get somebody delivered? That's what they said. We say it's crazy, but when you tiptoeing out, I can't stay past it right now because, and I'm praying for somebody. I'm going to look, that's crazy. When you send a text to First Lady and not to me, because you know you've been not sending it to me, but you're sending to her, Pastor shouldn't have prayed so long today. 
I'm going to say that's crazy. Because somebody needs to live it. And what if that was your child? What if that was your mama? What if that was your daughter? What if that was your husband? You be like, pray as long as you want, Pastor. Keep on praying. Put some more oil on them. They ain't greased down enough. Put some more on them, Pastor. But if I take shortcuts with somebody else, I need to take a shortcut with you. If I short somebody else, I need to short you. These weren't sinners. This was the leaders of the synagogue. I hope I don't got no leaders like that. But let me get back to the test. This was the leaders of the synagogue. But look what Jesus said in verse 15. But the Lord replied to them saying, you play actors. Oh, God. You play actors. Y'all ain't a play. Think y'all actors. So what he was saying, y'all come to church just to act. The only place you get to show off is in church and you don't want nobody to take your spotlight. He said, you play actors. You hypocrites. Does not each one of you on the Sabbath lose his ox or his donkey from the stall and lead it out to water it? Well, yeah. That's true. And ought not this woman... A daughter of Abraham, who Satan has kept bound for 18 years, be loose from this bond on the seventh, on the Sabbath day. I could have said seventh, because that means seventh. Even as he said this, all his opponents were put to shame. You want to have church. Church is not a religious performance. It's a moving of God. And if God ain't moving, you ain't had church. Yeah, the choir sung good. And everybody did good. And I even preached good. But if God ain't moving, we ain't had nothing. And here is this woman. So my third point, my third point, I did all that to get to my third point. My third point is somebody's always going to try to rain on your parade. Somebody's going to always try to rain on your parade. Get a new car? Well, I would have got a different car. It ain't your car. Get a house? Well, you know, I wouldn't have had them put that there. It ain't your house. Get healed? Why are you running around? You may catch it again. I ain't catching nothing again. I've been healed. You better be careful. You get that? Would you leave me alone? Now, they all, somebody's always trying to rain on your parade. The Bible says rejoice with them that rejoice. So when you get your healing, I'm supposed to shout with you. When you get your deliverance, I'm supposed to shout with you. When you get your breakthrough, I'm supposed to shout with you. And if you even feel like, well, Lord, you gave them theirs and they ain't get mine yet, shout hard enough. Oh, God. Shout hard enough with them and see what God does. Praise hard enough with them and see what God does. I'm going to rejoice with them that rejoice. But there's always somebody trying to rain on my parade. Always somebody. And sometimes they're closer than I want them to be. Oh, God, I said something right there. Sometimes they're closer than I want them to be, and they don't even know they're calling for the thunderstorm to come. Well, you should just rejoice with me because God has set me free. God, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna get that, but I ain't gonna say that. But it always raining on my parade. Let me get the verse number four and get out of here, cause some of y'all are trying to rain on my parade right now. Let me get the verse number. Four. Let me get this point four, uh, verse thirteen. Verse thirteen said she wreck. I, I caught this because the Bible don't say things just to be saying it, but it gave me three adjectives for one thing. Look at verse 13. It says, she recognized and thanked and praised God. I said, well, God, what did you put all that in there for? She recognized and thanked and praised God. And it hit me. Brother Ben, it hit me. She been through too much not to worship God. Oh, God. She recognized 
what she's been through. She thanked God that she's no longer in it. And she praised them for her deliverance. But what she was telling everybody in the synagogue, I've been through too much not to worship God right now. 18 years I've been bound. 18 years I've been sick. And you mean I ain't going to get up here and say glory, say hallelujah, and give him glory? Let me be out of order. I'm just going to be out of order. Let me be messed up. I'm just going to be messed up. But I'm going to praise God for this. She recognized, recognized. I mean, she pondered. Hold up. Hold up. Because, see, sometimes you've been in something so long that when you get out of it, you don't even recognize that you're out of it. But then again, you still acting like you're in it. <laughs> in the battle of filming, you, 18 years she's been bent over. So when she got up, her natural response was to go back down. Oh, help me here now. Help me. Can I teach this thing? She was up, but 18 years she'd been down. So when she got up, her mind said, go back down. But the Bible said she recognized. She said, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I don't. Hold up. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I don't got to stay down. She recognized. Because her mind couldn't grab the deliverance that she just got. Oh, God, I got to catch that. Her mind could not grab the deliverance that she got because her mind had been programmed over 18 years to stay bent down. And now she had to reprogram her mind to stay up. And so she recognized, hold up, I'm no longer got to be bent over. And then she said, thank you. When she said, I don't got to, then she said, thank you. But see, the thank you didn't stay there. Then she praised them. That means she went into a celebration. <laughs> see, she recognized I don't got to stay bent over. She thanked them for deliverance. And then she said, let's throw the party. Y'all ain't going to help me today. Uh, and some of you are, are not recognizing and thanking God and throwing a party for that you've been delivered, that you've been set free. Because your mind and your mentality got you still bent over when you should be straightened up. And you're not physically trapped. You're mentally trapped. Because the Bible said immediately her physical body got healing. But can I propose this to you? When she recognized her mind got healed. She recognized what happened. Hold up. I'm, I can twist. I can bend. I can stand straight up. And when she recognized, she said, thank you. And when she said, thank you, she said, well, let's have a party. Because I haven't been able to have a party for 18 years. I haven't been able to rejoice for 18 years. See, that's what I'm talking about. When you really get delivered, you ought to let the devil know you've really been delivered and tell him, I'm throwing a party and you are invited. Y'all ain't going to help me here. That's not biblical, pastor. Let me give you the verse. And he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemy. That's why I told the devil to come to my party because I'm preparing a table before me in the presence. Oh, God. Because how the devil know I've been delivered unless I invite him to my party? <laughs> how, the, how my haters know God and bless me with a new house until I tell them, come on, that you're going to fix dinner for your house. Yeah, come and sit at the table and let me fix your dinner because I'm going to show you what God, I'm going to give my enemy a ride in my new car because I'm going to show what God can do. Now, they may not eat your food because they may be scared. They may not get in your car because they may be scared. But I'm going to still invite them. You want to ride? I mean, let me give you a ride. Let me take you around the corner. Oh, no, no, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. You sure? It, it is nice. It's nice. You want to show you one? You come to my new house. I fix food for you. Oh, no, I'm, 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 I'm fasting today. I'm fasting today. Okay, fasting. Come to the house anyway. Come on. Say, no, 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 no. Because, see, your enemy don't know what to do. When well, you're praising God yes. with them. Yes. Yes. You. When you're praising God with them. That's the whole concept of him preparing a table before me in the presence of my enemy. That means me and my enemy are going to die together. Yes. And the only one's going to be nervous is my enemy. <laughs> I'm going to 
I can't help. I'm trying to help them this morning. The only one that's going to be nervous is my enemy. If God prepared the food, I'm eating. You want some? I got some masks. You want some masks? I want some. No, no. The enemy is the only one nervous at the table because they know what they said about you. Oh, God. They know what they talk about you. They know how they put you down. But you got them at the table of the blessing. That brings another note, and I got to get out of here. One of the reasons why the leaders of the church got so mad, because they knew what they talked about the woman. Oh, God. They knew how they talked about her. Because, see, during that time, if you had a condition in your body, it was said you did something wrong. Or your parents did something wrong. So you were cursed. But she was bound by the devil. She ain't do nothing wrong. She was just bound by the devil. And God set her free. But all them leaders who kicked up knew what they said about her in the church meeting. They knew what they said about her in the gathering. Why she keep coming to our church bent over like that? Why she keep coming? She knows she ain't getting no healing. She, they know what they said. So when Jesus healed her, they got indignant. Because they know what they said. I'm going to watch some of y'all. Because when God bless me, I'm going to see if you get indignant or not. Oh, God. Uh, I'm going to watch them. I'm going to see when God bless me. I want to see how you act. Because I want to see what, if you act right or not. Let God bless you. Look at your friends, not your enemies. Because sometimes you entertain the enemies who look like friends. Oh, God. Oh, God. And so when I get blessed, if you're a real friend, you'll be like, come on. When the, you don't wait for my invitation. You call. When you going to let me drive in your car? You got a new car. When I'm riding in the car, you got a new house. Well, I ain't had a house party. I ain't asking about no house party. Well, I'm coming over. That's a friend. Enemy wait for the invitation. I'm preaching better than they said amen today. Enemy waits for the invitation. A friend does not on the door. Job ain't had to invite me to his house. I was coming. I was coming to the new house because you ain't got to invite me because I ain't no enemy. I'm a friend. I come not. Um, you want to move over? I'm coming to, come to see your house. I ain't invite you. I know you ain't invite me. I'm coming to see your house. Where your man came at? Let's sit down, look at some TV, Star Trek, something. I'm a friend. I can come in there and chill like that. Enemies need an invitation. They ain't just showing up. But a friend of call and say, when are we going to do this thing? A friend of asked you, when are you going to the dealership? Can I go with you? I'll help you negotiate it. An enemy tell you, oh, I wouldn't do that. You ain't going to get no good credit. You ain't going to do that. And that. But a friend, you better check your list. Check it twice. I'm like Santa Claus. See who's a friend or see who was not. Oh, God. <laughs> Because my friends don't wait. Those who really want to rejoice with me ain't waiting for the invitation to the party. They're getting the party started by themselves. Because a friend has got a blessing. The enemy waiting for the invitation. A real friend will throw the party for you. Oh, God, I come yes, a real friend will throw the party for you. When you have your house warm, I don't know. Well, don't worry. We have it on this date, and this is what I'm bringing. And I told so and so that's what we bring it. And I told such and such that's what we bring So we're having the party. Oh, okay. You just having a Okay, come on. That's, that's what the real friends do. Real friends just throw the party and say, come on. They don't wait for you to throw it. Because they are excited about what's happening to you. The enemy is just trying to wait on you. And they want an invitation. I'm going to get an invitation before I go. Yeah, I don't need you in a way because you don't got the right spirit. We come to have a rejoicing time for what God has done for me. I don't need to wait. The woman says she recognized, she thanked, and she praised God. And let me close on this point. She got a three-dimensional blessing. She got a spiritual blessing because Jesus delivered her from the demon of sickness. She got a physical blessing because her physical body was healed. But she got a mental blessing because God changed. When she recognized, that's in essence is saying God changed her way of thinking. She recognized. She thanked. 
And she praised God. All because her position, her worship, and her condition said, help Jesus. Rest to your feet all over the place. That's a good place to give God a praise. <laughs> That's a good place to give God a praise. I want to help you right quick. I want to help you right quick because, see, some of us have already been blessed, but we just haven't recognized it. You haven't recognized it. You're already blessed, but you haven't recognized it. Because you haven't recognized, you haven't said thank you. Because you haven't said thank you, you haven't went into the praise. And so I'm just here to help you this morning. At first, I thought God was dealing with me. He said, just let them know that Jesus sees them in church. But then, as I'm preaching the message, God said, no, help them to realize I've already blessed them. Stop living like you're not blessed. God said, you're already blessed. And you can't walk into your future blessing until you recognize your present blessing. Oh, God, right? That's right there. You cannot walk into your future blessing until you recognize your present blessing. And so what you need to recognize is that despite everything I am going through, I am blessed. For the simple fact that somebody else who's been through half the stuff you've been through has lost their mind, has lost their house has lost their car, has thrown away their life, and haven't even having a desire to live. But God has brought you through all of it, and you still got your right mind. You like the woman for, with, eight, with had the condition for 18 years. After 18 years, she still wanted to go to church. After everything you've been through, you still want to go to church. That's a blessing. And you still throw up your hands. And you still say thank you. And you're still looking for God to bring you out. And you're still looking for God to do it. You got to recognize I'm already blessed. I'm just waiting for my next blessing. I'm already blessed. Can I use this analogy and I'm getting out of here? You already got the ticket to get on the plane. You just wait for them to call your name. It don't matter how many people go before you because nobody can sit in your seat because you the only one got the ticket. And when you get on the plane, if they are in your seat, stewards, this is my seat, and they'll tell them to move. Don't worry about your haters trying to take your place. If you got the ticket, good call them about it. If you got the ticket, they can't sit in your seat. They got to get up. And the only way they can stay there is if you let them. That's why I got to change your mind. That's why I got to change your mindset. Because I ain't letting no devil sit in my seat. Oh, that one belongs to me. It took me too long to get on this plane. You better get out of my seat. It took me too, too long for the plane to come. It's off schedule. You better get out of my seat. You know how long I had to wait for this blessing? How many times I had to cry? How many times I had to reinforce my faith by reading my word, by listening to worship and praise song? You know how long I had to keep this? And I'm going to let you sit in my seat. Get up, get out! Brother Chris encouraged my heart. He was texting us about his granddaughter, his grandchild, and, and God was delivered. But he said something in the text. He said, I told that joker, this is war. Oh God, that's what you got to tell the devil. You sitting in my seat, you better get up. I ain't getting up. Holy Ghost, which is the stewardess. Holy Ghost, come and get them out my seat. Because Jesus, who is the pilot, ain't taking off till you get out my seat. I'm already blessed. I'm already blessed. I'm already blessed. That's what I'm recognizing. I'm already blessed. It don't matter what relationship I've been through, I'm already blessed. I hit you where you at. It don't matter what relationship you're in, you're already blessed. You're already blessed. God is already on your side. Because if the enemy could have took you out, you would already been out. And if the enemy could have took you out, he would never let you hear this message. He would never let you get this word of encouragement. Recognize. Then thank. Then praise God.
every head bow, every eye closed. Father, in the name of Jesus, everyone here who the enemy has blinded from the blessing that you have on their lives, I've removed the blinders now in the name of Jesus. From this day forth, they shall recognize your hand on their life, the blessing that you have bestowed upon them, and where you want them to go. They shall see the purpose and the destiny that you have for them, and the enemy will no longer hold them bound, bound by past failures, messed up relationships, and unsuccessful ventures. People who didn't speak positive in their lives but spoke negative in their lives. People who didn't mean them no good. I rebuke all that. Let them see your hand that is upon their lives right now. Let them recognize. Let them thank. And let them praise. In Jesus' name, we receive it now. And we say amen. Come on, give God a praise for that. For the next 30 days, for the next 30 days, because the enemy's going to try to come. We already got on our mirror, and I know some of y'all may already be still saying it, but let's reinforce it. My mind is sharp. My body is healed. I walk in favor and I live in my wealthy place. For the next 30 days, I want you to speak that to yourself in the morning and in the evening. Because you got to let your mind know, I am blessed. How do I know I'm blessed? My mind is sharp. My body is healed. I walk in favor and I live in my wealthy place. That's the four ingredients of my blessing. If you got that, you blessed. My mind is sharp. My body is healed. I walk in favor and I live in my wealthy place. That's blessing. And some of y'all need to convince yourself of that because you don't think you are. You don't think you are. So you got to look yourself in the mirror in the morning or in the evening. I don't care when you do it, but you got to do it twice a day. You got to look yourself in the mirror and say, my mind is sharp. My body is healed. I walk in favor and I live in my wealthy place. Because I've learned this. I've been reading the book. I've been reading David Ramsey. I've been reading the book. They said the longer you tell a lie and the longer you tell it, people believe this is the truth. So the longer I tell the truth and the louder I tell it, I'm going to make my mind believe that it is true since it is. So the longer I tell myself my mind is sharp, my body is healed, I walk in favor and I live in my wealthy place, I keep telling myself that myself don't believe it. And when myself believe it, it's going to act like it. And my body's going to come in line. My mind's going to come in line. And then everything around me is going to come in line. So let's do that for the next 30 days. My mind is sharp. My body is healed. I walk in favor. I live in my wealthy place. And when those pressures of life come, and it looks like it's overwhelming you, just whisper it to yourself. My mind is sharp. My body is healed. I walk in favor. I live in my wealthy place. And when you get bad about it, and devil, you can't do nothing about it. Oh, God. Stop. And devil, you can't do nothing about it. Come on, give God a praise one more time.